Well, hi everybody. Uh, this is my first entry into the 555 Timer Contest, um, sponsored at www.555contest.com. So, pretty much what I've done here, if we can zoom in on my schematic, um, I've invented a power failure indicator circuit. So I'm using the 555 pretty much just as an RS latch. Nothing overly complicated, but kind of interesting. So we can see up here, I've got a transformless power supply. So this runs right off 120 volts AC. Siphons about 5 volts off with a Zener regulator right here, you can see. Filtered with a capacitor and a bleeder resistor. That resistor is actually very important to make sure that when the power fails, this capacitor discharges properly. So this circuit provides 5 volts down to my 555 circuit, which is here. Basically what happens is I've got a red LED, which is the failed state, and a green LED, which is the OK, you've reset the device state. The circuit is, or the timer rather, is reset by the 47K and the 1 microfarad on the reset pin of the 555. So when power is first applied, the latch starts up in the failed state, and the sinks pin 7, and the red failure LED comes on. Then what the user does is says, oh, that means I have a power failure. So they push the reset button, which is connected to pin 2. So it drops that to ground, which is lower than the um, one-third VCC internal threshold, thereby setting the latch. And now the green LED connected to pin 3 switches on, the red switches off, and you say, okay, I've reset the device. Then when the power fails, the same thing happens. The device shuts off. When it comes back on again, it resets through the 47K and the one mic um, reset circuit. And then the red LED comes on. You walk up and say, gee, I've had a power failure. So let me demonstrate now. I've got the circuit here built on a, a breadboard. Be very careful with this. As you can see right here, this part is where the 120 volts comes in is through these two lines. I do not recommend actually building this circuit yourself. It is extremely dangerous. Anyways, so I've got it connected here through this power strip. I've got the switch, so I will turn it on. And you can see now I've got here my red failure LED is activated. So it's telling me I've had a power failure. So I come up and I push the, the button here, which is a reset. Now you can see the red has extinguished and the green is now active. So everything's good. This circuit would just sit like this. And as long as there's power, that green LED will stay on. And you say, okay, I haven't had a power failure. Now, if I simulate a power failure by turning the switch, device shuts off. If I turn it back on, now you can see my red failure LED has lit up. So if I wasn't here and the power failed, that's what would happen. And then when I came back, I could say, oh, power's failed. Then reset the device and away you go. I figure the applications for this would be at, say, cottages or... Um, some you know a summer home or something where you you're not there in say the winter so you want to know if your fridge has um, had power the whole time and if your food if anything in there is still good um, the downside to this unfortunately is it doesn't log the data so you can't tell how long the power has been out and um, let me just show here it will reset within under a second so if I throw the switch and then whoops see there's that's about half a second roughly and the device has reset so that actually is controlled by here these um, 100 microfarad filter capacitor and the 10k bleeder make sure that in a certain time constant based on 5 tau tau being r times c 100 microfarads times 10 kilo ohms um, the power supply completely dissipates so that when it's powered on again the reset circuit is also completely empty and then powers up accordingly resetting the device making it accurate for failures within um, a duration greater than about a second or so again those values can be changed if you don't want it to be tripped by just very short durations and you want it to be tripped by a longer failure you just change those values but that's pretty much my circuit uh, again nothing too complicated but I thought it was somewhat of a nifty idea for a 555 so Hope you enjoyed.